Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and today I've got a little bit of gameplay for all of you with the West Virginia 1941 Tier 6 Premium American Battleship. So is she worth it? Should you get this ship? Well, I think a big part of answering that question is you having to ask yourself this particular thing. Do you like 21 knots? Because there's some players who cannot stand slow battleships, or slow ships in general. And if you cannot stand 21 knot ships, then West Virginia very likely isn't for you. However, if you can tolerate her slow speed, she does have things that make her a pretty good ship. Most notably, the fact that she's got 8 406mm guns, down to tier 6. This allows you to overmatch every other tier 6 battleship. It allows you to overmatch all the tier 7 battleships that have 25mm bow and stern. And that allows her to actually do quite well in most of the battles that you're going to go into. She does struggle a bit dealing with tier 8 battleships. However, her guns do still have very good penetration. So, if you do catch tier 8 battleships giving you a side, you're still going to do good damage. She does have 1.8 Sigma, which means that her shots are going to be a little bit on the wild side, um, but it is entirely playable. Still, if you're comparing her to War Spite, you are going to be pretty sorely disappointed. Still, her guns, they're going to perform. Let's just leave it at that, right? So that's her major strength. The ability to overmatch stuff, the ability to have good penetration, and be able to deal with even higher tier ships. So that's all the pros. Now, other characteristics of West Virginia is interesting, maybe that's the best way to put it, because her armor is, well, not really the best that you can get. She's actually got pretty good Citadel protecting main belt armor. 343 millimeters is actually quite thick and angled correctly. Well, you're going to be well protected from Citadels. However, however, there's a however to this. She's got 25 millimeters the rest of the way up. So you got this main belt that's nice and thick, and then everything above that is only 25 millimeters. Problem with that is, of course, you eat a lot of penetration damage from ships that can overmatch 25 millimeters. So, yeah, her armor is kind of a mixed bag. You know, good main belt allows you to mitigate chances of getting citadeled, but end up taking quite a bit of penetration damage. So. Also, her torpedo protection is not all that great. Uh, fully spec'd out, I think it's only 22% reduction, which is pretty abysmal, right? If you look at Colorado, I think Colorado fully spec'd out is 37%. 22% makes destroyers kind of scary. Yeah, so be careful torpedoes. However, she is a standard high battleship, which means that her turning circle radius is pretty small. That means, hey, if you have a chance to see those torpedoes in time, should be able to dodge most of those set torpedoes. She does, of course, turn pretty slowly. West Virginia seems to bleed a lot of speed in her turns. And that does expose you a little bit more to enemy ships while you're in a turn. Oh, and by the way, speaking of these guns, pay attention. A lot of times you'll see me start shooting at battleships that are angled at tier 6, and I just simply don't care about their angles. And that's one of the fun things about West Virginia is as you're playing her, you can just be like, I don't care about your angles. It don't matter. If I can hit your 25 millimeter sections, I'm going to get damage. And that's pretty much what you'll see me doing with a lot of enemy battleships is just not caring. And that's really the advantage of these 406 millimeter guns. Watch the salvo against this QE. Blup. Almost 16k damage there. Like, what's this QE going to do? I mean, really... The QE's best hope right now is actually to turn away and try to pull distance on me because maybe try to get outside of my range or something as the way to survive. But yeah, look at that. Bad position as well. The island's over there. So pretty much keep coming, right? Even if he angled and turned his bow towards me, it wouldn't have mattered. I know where to shoot on that QE. Just aim at the 25 millimeter sections, fire. There's another 11.5K almost. That QE's going to go down. And that's pretty much West Virginia's thing is that you know she's got good penetration with overmatch and abuse your guns to the best of your abilities against other tier 6 tier 7 battleships right tier 8 battleships though i will say you will struggle like that's a fact if you run into those tier 8 battleships that angle against you you're going to struggle and by the way i did mention the crazy dispersion on occasion i mean i had a salvo there with that queen elizabeth 
you sort of watch the shells and they kind of spread out a little bit crazier, right? So, you know, that's really West Virginia. If you can hit your target and you can aim well and you know where to aim on enemy ships, she will reward you. She will do quite well. But if you're not very good at aiming, then she likely will be quite punishing to you as a player because she doesn't have the sheer volume of shells to make up for poor aim. And so, again, you're probably going to see very mixed reactions from people who have this ship. Some people are going to absolutely love her because, you know, their aim is on point. And some people are going to absolutely despise the ship because they're going to be like, why can't these guns ever hit anything, right? And so it'll really be up to you, the player. And by the way, you'll see me, like, there's a Colorado it's trying to angle, right, trying to stay in that position. And I'm just like, no, I don't care. I will hit you for... You know, a couple of penetrations here, a couple of penetrations there, and it's a couple thousand damage a turn, right? And sometimes you get good ones, you get like 10k, 11k, even when they're angled. So that's really what you're going to do. Oh, and this Congo. This Congo is making a big mistake. You, you can see what's going to happen. This Congo is full broadside and not taking any kind of evasive maneuver. You can already see that the dispersion on this shot is good. Now it just has to land and boom, a triple citadel. Goodbye, Congo. There is a New Orleans there as well. I'm not sure what that New Orleans is doing. Looks like he's just sitting there. Not sure if he's actually here, but on the map he hasn't really moved. He's definitely shooting, so he's got to be there. I'm not sure why he's not moving. So perfect opportunity to use these guns again. And once again, you'll see that the dispersion isn't See, it's not perfect, right? It's not like super tied together. It's a little bit spread out, but I'm going to get enough good hits in there, and there we go. Another two Citadels. That New Orleans is almost dead. There's a follow-up salvo that's coming in there from my division mate, and right, I knocked out the engine, so blap. There goes the New Orleans as well. Okay, continue to push down over here. There's the New Mexico. Do I care about the New Mexico's angles? No. Of course, the New Mexico is also in a bad position, kind of stuck up against that island over there. But yeah, I'm just going to use my guns and punish everything I can. There's three penetrations onto that New Mexico, and I think that was another like 11,000 some odd damage. So that was good. Enemy team is just absolutely like melting right now. West Virginia's major struggle is when you run into tier 8 games, where you run into those fast battleships that have 32 millimeters of armor, and they have guns that can overmatch you. That becomes challenging to play. Kind of key tips for you if you run into that situation is don't be the one leading the charge and don't also be the last one to kite away. You have to be the one that knows how to use your speed correctly. Watch this. Enemy Colorado really attempting to angle, right? No. Don't care. There's another almost 12k damage. There's my high caliber in this particular battle. It's actually not even been a very long battle so far. Just past sort of the eight minute marker and things are really looking up for me. I'm in 131,000 damage right now. So far, West Virginia for me personally is the top performing tier six battleship for me. I think if I remember correctly, I'm averaging like 91,000 damage a game, which I attribute mostly to the fact that her guns have overmatch against you know, tier 6, tier 7 opponents, and also really good penetration. So if I do end up at tier 8 games and I find broadside battleships, I can still hammer them for very good damage. She's got really good guns for tier 6 battleship. Yes, I know, somebody's going to say, but she only has 1.8 sigma. I, I know. Yes, the dispersion can at times be a little bit erratic and it can be a little bit frustrating, but overall, if you have good aim and you know where to aim or where to shoot, this is a ship that will reward you. That is a fact. However, if your aim is terrible, West Virginia very likely is not going to perform for you at all, and you're most likely going to get really, really frustrated with her. Because she doesn't have that volume of shells to make up for crappy aim. Like, if your aim sucks, you're probably going to be better off with, like, Arizona or even, you know, Fuso, whatever. Things that have 12 shells that don't really give a damn about your ability to aim. See? Watch. Upper belt armor, know that's 25 millimeters, land the shells there, New Mexico eats penetration damage. That was only only four shells, because the other four got blocked by the island, right? So you can see what she is capable of. New Mexico, I believe here, is going to try to angle quite heavily, actually. And you'll see that West Virginia just doesn't care. Doesn't care at all. Come on, New Mexico, what are you going to try to do here? Try to angle? That's cute. That's really cute. 
And watch where I'm hitting, right? You'll see where I'm hitting. I'm not hitting at the belt area. I'm hitting up of the main belt area. Because I know if I hit the main belt, it's going to ricochet, right? It is angled enough there. But I hit up a little bit, hit that upper portion, and boom, penetration damage. All right, enemy Colorado there. All right, this Colorado's already really low. See if I can get this final kill here. Come on. Okay, I do apologize for the stutter cam. It's replay. Yeah. I, I kind of mentioned this in my last video. There, there's some weird replay thing going on. Okay, there goes my shells. All right, there we go. Shells going. Yeah, see? That 1.8 Sigma playing here. This version is a little bit erratic, but not a problem. Last little bit of HP here, and blop. There is a kill number four. Let's take a look at the final results screen here. 149,509 damage, 430,000 credits, uh, 4,526 experience. Five Citadel hits, I got High Caliber, got Dev Strike, sunk four enemy ships, so that's pretty good. Um, let's take a look at the base experience, 1,827, so easily top of the team in this particular battle. All 149,509 damage done by Armor Piercing Shells. Only took 22,744 damage in return, it was a relatively short battle. 396,667 credits earned net, 253k if it was without a premium account. Anyways, folks, hope you enjoyed this West Virginia video. Take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you when I get back from the U.S.